This is Johanna Abman. Welcome to my tutorial on a recording studio that I created for a story called This Is Not It. So my first pieces that I started off with were a drum set by Liv Dolls and a couch set by Randall Craig which I then sewed new cushions with some faux suede. The rest I had to build myself. I started off with pinning my walls together with sewing pins. Uh, all my walls are made out of foam boards so pins are going to be everywhere in this tutorial. My divider foam board wall has uh, got a big hole cut through it and then I put a, a frame for a picture in there but I took the glass out of it so that I could cut off the mixing room from the rest of the recording studio. And it's a much smaller space. This is where I'm going to put my mixing board. I had a door that leads out to the regular room which is basically just another piece of foam board wrapped in silver contact paper with black contact paper as, as highlights and it's got a basically a real dr kitchen drawer um, handle and poked into it. I had two doors made on both sides that way I wouldn't have to keep refilming and untaping one and putting it on the other side. And This is with the furniture kind of put in there. The speakers I'm going to talk about a little bit later. The lighting, uh, at the time when I used to do it this way, uh, I have just transparent corrugated board on top with uh, painter's cans pointing down into the room. I took a fancy pencil holder for the top of the desk and I usually use those. I flip them over and you can make credenzas and other tables out of them, but it's going to be the base of my mixing board. I cut a piece of half inch thick foam board to actually be the actual mixing board itself and then another smaller sized one across the back to tip it up because mixing boards are usually at an angle like this. I then cut two thinner one half inch sides which I measured perfectly to fit on the side. I'm going to cover those in silver contact paper and then I'm going to pin it together. I'll make it all one unit. The top of the mixing board I wanted to have it in black so I used black contact paper and make sure you rub all the bubbles out of it. Once I do this I flip it over and I rub the bubbles out and then I flip it back over to this side and I cut all the edges out so that you have just this and just wrap those four edges over the top of this foam board and you've got a perfectly wrapped piece of foam board to be the base of your mixing board. This is what it looks like when it's all pinned together. I took another piece of silver contact paper as you can see across the middle of it and wrapped it around just to give it uh, give it more of a mixer look. <clears throat> I then started to take some pins, sewing pins, and put them into it and then I noticed they were just too darn long. Um, they were poking the top of my table which I didn't want them to do. So I grabbed a cutter that you use for any kind of jewelry making. Um, and I started cutting off the ends of it to make the pins a little bit shorter. I then started poking them through because I wanted a three-dimensional object sticking out the top that you can see in mixers where they're you know always pushing the, the little buttons up and down. And the, the pins were good but then I wanted more square ones so I went through my jewelry beads and I started looking at those and I found a bunch of rectangular shaped ones that I had and used the flatter sewing pins to push those through. As you can see I have a very big collection of all kinds of jewelry beads. I love to make jewelry for my dolls but they're good for doorknobs, they're good for this kind of stuff so I, I like to improvise with the beads themselves. If you put them, space them out in nice little intervals here and then I use lots of different colors because I've seen those on mixing boards and this, this is what it looked like when it was done with more strips of silver contact paper to make it look like you could slide those up and down. Here's a side shot. Because they're beads, they're three-dimensional, they stick out and it looks much more realistic when you're photographing it. Next I started to work on the speakers. I bought four different cardboard boxes with the box tops. I also bought a bunch of different circular crochet netting circles. They're these nice little light plastic uh, circles. I took them and I painted them black with an acrylic paint. Uh, these circles are going to be the front of my subwoofers and I bought a bunch of little circle mirrors that are about the same size and I wrapped the front of the box top with black contact paper, put the circle mirrors on them. You can either tape them or you can glue them on. For the back side of the boxes I bought rectangular squares of felt material and I just glued them onto it with a glue gun that you can see over on the right hand side. When they were complete you can see that the box tops themselves kind of 
push back the speaker so the balance on them wasn't the best. Here it is from the side. You may or may not want to use the top itself. I wanted to use them just because I wanted really tight, nice edges and I wanted to make sure that they, I wasn't trying to pull something across a hole. So, oh, they were so pretty. Um, unfortunately, I lost at least half of those beautiful black crocheted painted uh, circles. They fell back behind a cabinet and I could never find them again. So this is what they look like before I could never use them again. <laughs> I'm gonna have to buy some more and try again. I had no time at the time I had to start the filming. So unfortunately, <laughs> I, I had to use these. Um, I found dish strainers for a kitchen sink at a 99 cent store and I glued those on the front and they worked well enough for what I needed to do when I filmed. So here are some shots of the completed diorama. Here's the mixing room and I split up that Randall Craig couch so half of it's in here and half of it's in the other room. Uh, most of the instruments I got online from various places. The guitars super easy to get from 1-6 scale stores on eBay and the acoustic guitars I got from a, a Christmas ornament uh, online. The keyboard is just a Barbie keyboard, I think from a Mycene set, and the bench is from a glorious piano set that I painted. And here you can see through the window into the mixing room, anything that's on the walls, I just basically printed out. I made the logo for Chapman Records, and the others are just little portraits that I've taken of my dolls. The drum set is on top of a Fashion Royalty Monsignor Z doll box just to give it a little more lift because once I started taking photographs of the actual dolls themselves recording, I needed to be able to see the drummer behind them. And here's just more shots of the finished product. The door is just another piece of foam board with uh, wood contact paper on it. And here's my band Red from the story This Is Not It. Please check out that story on the drama section of my website, jatmanstories.com. And thank you so much for listening to my tutorial on Recording Studio. I hope this uh, gives you inspiration to make your own 1-6 scale dioramas. Have fun doing it, and there's plenty more diorama tutorials coming from me.